Okay, so um, our project here, we should be seeing that it is actually then now capturing a name and capturing it permanently. You close your app completely, your name is still there. You restart your phone, your app is still there. If you delete the app, then it's gone because we have to deal with you know, uh, saving that elsewhere besides your app. We could save it to the memory card. Um, that would require that we go look up the Cordova plugin file. There's a whole um, there's a whole plugin for that the file API to read, write, and navigate file systems. Um, this is just quick sidebar. We're not going to do that right now. But if you go look at the Cordova documentation and look up the file plugin, there's all of this stuff here about accessing the file system of the device. So you could save this data to the SD card of the user. Then when they delete the, um, the app, and then maybe a month later decide, actually, I do want the app back, they can reinstall it, it'll look on the file system, does a name exist, and pull it out. So file. Cool. And this is another bit of complexity because then you have to create a path to your file. What if the person, they themselves, goes to the memory card and formats their memory card? Okay, then it's gone also. What if they move folders in their memory card? They see, what's this weird folder in here called do not look inside? And then they delete it. Well, that was the folder that you created to save all your data to your to the device, and you named it in a weird way, and someone got paranoid and deleted it. Well, there's always ingenious fools. So for us, this is good enough for the moment. Later on, we'll talk about more complex uh, saving data, like in a database, because eventually our app here is going to let us save class data information. And a class, we will see, is defined by the class number, the class title, and the class instructor. I want those three bits of data to be saved into one variable. I want those three bits of data to be stored and retrieved when I need it. I want to retrieve only the name of a particular class, or I want to retrieve the name and the instructor and the number of the class. And I want all those three saved into one object. That's when, we get, when we're going to talk about the more complex database. I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. You can go explore this. We'll do it together, of course, a little later. You can start to look at pouchdb.com. This is what we're going to use to create our databases to save our data. It is a JavaScript-based data. It runs on the latest uh, concept of a NoSQL database. A classic database has specific commands that you write in structured queried language to add or delete data. This is going to do it via JavaScript. Again, we'll look at this uh, later with more detail. You can explore it on your own. It's free. It's open source. It's constantly evolving. It's on version 5.31 now. All the guides and documentation are here. It's pretty cool and popular. And the great thing about it is that it also synchronizes. We will see. We can simply do replicate to my server. And it sends all of this data off to a server. Well, you still need server infrastructure and passwords and all of that. That'll be something we touch on later. What I want to do with what we've, been, we've done so far is to think a little bit more also as, let's see, think more as a um, Think also in terms of like quality assurance, um, you know, QA testing. How good is this working? Because it, we, it can work good on a technical level, but does it work good on a user level? We can get really complex and really understand how this works technical-wise, and it works. But let's think about it also from the point of view of the user, user experience. That's a term, UX. UX design, user experience design. How are we designing our app to work best for the user? Because a trap that we can easily fall into is we're, we're writing nerdy code and we think that only other nerds will, will look at it or use it. But we have to think about that regular users will use it too. And that's when we test things. Have you thought about this? What if 
What if um, someone downloads my app from the App Store, eventually when we get it to that point, and they see that there's this customization option. And they um, want to use the app. And when it prompts them to put in their name, they put in numbers. No one really has numbers in their name yet, I guess, until we run out of names. Um, and so what if we want here no numbers? At the moment, we don't have any check for that or any fail-safes for that. If I do customize, what's your name? THX1138. Great, it'll let me do that. And it'll take that name and it'll put it. So there's no checks for numbers. Now, if this were... this might not be a problem because it might be this is my social media app and uh, I, people can create usernames here and then John Smith is already taken so I've got to be John Smith 99 you know that happens all the time on social media John Smith is taken so John Smith 99 there's no check for that either what if you are making some sort of app where you have to put in unique names there's no check at all John Smith already exists well what's gonna happen here is this gonna take over someone else's profile is it gonna erase someone else's profile is it gonna lock me out of it I don't know. None of that has been programmed. None of that has been defined. So right now, very weird things could happen. And that's what I'm saying about user experience. Now we've got to think like a user and test it. Possibilities. Did you think about this? What if... What's your name? Classic profanities from uh, cartoons? <laughs> Click OK. It won't, it won't care. Yeah, welcome, blah, 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 so-and-so. So it's not doing any checks for bad input. That's part of user experience design. That can be pretty complex because this is letting us put in whatever sort of value. doesn't matter. Numbers, letters, symbols. So we would have to write a bunch of JavaScript check that only numbers are, I mean, only letters are added. Check that only uppercase and lowercase letters are added. Okay, if, if numbers are added, what do we do about it? Do we give an error? Or do we strip those numbers out and, and discard them? So that's more of that level of complexity that, that, um, that we need to deal with. For the moment, we will have a little bit of, a, of, of checking this, a little bit of testing. Um, because what about this? I'm going to open my console. So it is seeing those names. Um, in my console here, after I get a lot of results, what I like to do, you can do this optionally, but what I like to do when I get a console full of stuff, if you click that little clear console, I guess control L. If you click that little no symbol, that will clear your console. Don't do, don't do that unless you want to lose everything already there. I don't care. But I'm going to clear my console because I want to see my latest messages. You can do that or not. The reason I want to do this is, what about, have you thought about this? What if a person goes here, clicks customize, and clicks cancel? Welcome null. Mm. And that's what my output is saying. So it looks like if someone cancels, the result that comes back out of prompt is null. <laughs> So sometimes you get null, sometimes you get undefined, sometimes you get empty. That's what our test was trying to do over here. Empty, null, undefined. So I'm seeing that in action. If someone clicks cancel, that's what they get. Okay, more testing. What if I click OK without typing anything? Result is empty, and my result visually empty. That's what my test over here was about. Empty. If someone didn't type anything. No. And some operating systems will take a cancel and set it as an undefined. That's why we've got that third possibility. 
and I haven't tested it on all the operating systems. I don't know what, for example, the BlackBerry would do. I don't know what, um, you know, the Amazon um, device would do. So we would want to test it on more devices and have possible more checks here, or this, or that, or this. That's what that or is about. Check if we get this bad input or that bad input or this bad input. If we got any of those bad inputs, don't do anything. Or else it must be a good input. But that's still not good enough because what if numbers? What if exclamation points? What if emoji? So special characters, I haven't checked for every possible input. Yes? Is line 73 working now? Should it print out that local storage is currently with console? You will only print that out the very first time that you run this because no name has been given at all. Subsequent times you probably gave it a name, even a blank name, so it will show something. So this else here will only work really the very first time. There's no name given at all. So I would have to test it. Um, like this. So I'm going to run my real device. My real device, I've got it right here. Cordova's ready. And if I, if I force quit my app, see I completely closed it, and then I launch the app again, because I force quit it, it's still in memory. That was the point. No, if I uninstall it and reinstall it, and there's absolutely no input at all. And actually, I think what I can do, let me try this, I think I can clear out the memory of the app now that I think about it. Yeah, the cache. Let me do that. I'm going to go to my apps, click and hold and drag, app info, and I have a button here that says clear data. Let me tap clear data. Launch my app again. There we go. Local storage is currently undefined. So there is a way to really, really delete that local storage data. Simply force quitting it doesn't do it. Uninstalling it does. But I went into the app info and I cleared the data. So I actually cleared any data that the app created. And that's when you see that, when there's like no name at all that no one has ever put in. Local storage is currently undefined because that's what my code here is saying check what's in local storage. Is it this, or this, or this? So on the console, it says currently local storage is this. It hit undefined. On some devices it might give no, or blank, empty. That's why we're trying to check different ones. So we're going to do something like this before someone actually puts in a name. We're not going to do every possible check. We're not going to check for numbers and exclamation points and all that. That's more complex. At the moment, I want to at least check for these possibilities that I just showed you. If you click Cancel, it might go undefined. If you click OK without typing anything, it'll go empty. So I want to check for those at least. If someone typed those, then deal with that. So basically, we need another if-else statement. But we need another if-else check at the moment we're trying to get the name. Here, it'll ask for the it'll ask for the name and then go on. Whatever the person puts, show it on screen, no matter how wrong it is. So we don't want this, actually. We want something like this. We want it to check for this. Bad input, do something about it. Good input, do something about it. So basically, this code that we've got in the load name function, take, take all of this code, copy this code, if to the closing curly brace. Not that closing curly brace which closes the load name. Copy the whole if, else, chunk. Copy that. And then delete line 68 which is the plain old one that just lets anything through the gates. Delete that one. And paste. So I took my load name code, copy that, replace the 
replace the get name, which was this line here anyways. Replace it with what we copied, and now this is a little bit of a better check. We'll fine tune it in a moment, but what this is doing is if someone opens it up and just clicks cancel, it won't display anything on screen. If someone doesn't type anything and clicks OK, it won't display anything on screen. Maybe better yet, let's say someone did cancel it or put null or something. We could have something extra here just to see how this works. New line 71 after console log, we will do alert. Just a basic pop up box. Please enter a valid name. Or any way we want to say this. Go ahead and save and run this. And now test it by putting cancel, test it by simply putting OK, test it with other ways to try to break it. You'll definitely find other ways to break it. That's beta testing, so let's try that. There's a little bit of a check for valid input. It's not the best input check tester at all. There's still a lot of possibilities, but that's what the idea is. Check for input before doing something with it. So whenever, there, whenever there's any sort of user input, then there's those are failure points. Those are points where someone can accidentally um, do something weird or purposefully. This is also how people break apps. People try to put in weird input, and maybe since that was never dealt with, suddenly you've gained full root access of the app. It's you know, broke. worst case scenario, and so. Let's see what mine does here. Let's check console output. Local current. Customize. I'm going to click cancel. Please, a valid name, if I wrote it right. Please enter a valid name. Local storage is null. What if I do customize and this time simply click OK? Please enter a valid name. It found the other possible wrong thing. And again, it's not the best checker. What if I do this? <laughs> Great. Welcome. Blank, blank, blank. So this is all of this checking for validity. Why don't you put in a name of your name is no. <laughs> good, good thinking. Let's see what happens. No. Please enter a valid name. It, it tripped up the, the thing that it's looking for no. I type no, literally. No. So it didn't, it didn't like it. But wait a minute. Well, what about capital no? Let's say welcome no. <laughs> okay, let's try undefined. It'll probably be the same thing. Um, let's see, undefined. Oh, it let it. Because our check here is not technically checking for the undefined string, it's checking for the undefined object. And why is no from the beta testing that we've done previously, this seemed to be the right way to do it. But obviously we can further check. Yeah. So just for fun, I will uncomment, I mean unstring that. This is what we would do to test it. So while that's loading up, what I also bring to your attention, let's say I do want to uh, 
not accept any numbers. Let's say I want to let the person type Victor123, but I only want it to show one Victor, not Victor123. So this is where I would go to do a good old search and look for uh, remove numbers from a variable, or I suppose from a string, JavaScript. So if you don't have the answer, if I don't have the answer, this is how I find the answer. What am I trying to do? And specify JavaScript, because you're going to get answers of how to do this in C-sharp, and F-sharp, and C, and C++. So always specify what language you're trying to do this in. Remove numbers from a string. And sometimes you might not have the right terminology to use, but type whatever you think you're looking for. Someone must have asked that question before, and you'll probably get that answer. So I'm checking null with no quotes. So it also saw it as invalid. So it doesn't seem to be a big difference. But that's why we can add more ors just to test all possibilities. But null here is giving the string, right? I removed the string. Can I, you go back to your code, please? I changed it back over here without a string, and, and it's one. still. Yeah. Maybe that prompt converts it to a string. Yes? Put all those conditions in the lines of the line to break the line or can um, I think so. I think just moving it like this. Yeah. I think so, yeah. That should be valid because we've still got the terminating curly uh, uh, parenthesis right there. Mm -hmm. So I was just taking a little tangent here. JavaScript, removing numbers from string. So you're going to get answers. When you see any answers, try to see if you can find answers that are more recent. So here's an answer from 2011. It may or may not work. From one a little newer, a little older, they might work. You just have to kind of check it a little bit. And then you're going to see, again, there's many answers to this. So someone wrote the name, one space ding question. And he wants to only display the number. So you're going to get bunches of answers. What's the right answer? Usually the one with more votes, more positive votes. Other people look at it and they say, yeah, that's a good method. Or they say, no, this is a better method. And then someone else upvotes it or downvotes it. So. That's what you would be looking at to so right here, someone is saying you've got here this name that someone put in, maybe simply with dot replace, and with a little bit of regex magic, you can cut out what you don't want. You can explore that on your own. But that's how you would further find out extra, extra things to do. Maybe it's as simple as just copying and pasting. We'll see. And sometimes it's a little more complex. I'm just curious if it'll work or not. Because what it's saying is to apply this to a variable. And technically, we don't have a variable. We have a local storage object. Let's see if it does this. Any general questions so far? We're going to do more JavaScript uh, on the next few days also. We need to start talking about the database to save more complex data. And that's going to be a fun couple of days because that then we get much more complex. Create the database, save stuff to the database, retrieve from the database, edit the database, those main four operations. And then we're going to get more complex. So let's see. So I'm curious to see if this will work here. And I've found plenty of times online that someone says, just use this code, and it worked. I'm going to put in THX1138. So there it goes. That's a possible way to take out non-numbers, non-symbols. So if you want that, 
basically like you saw here I did a search Google search remove numbers from a string JavaScript my first result was a stack overflow results from February from Valentine's 2011 from stack overflow with love and uh, that was the answer and I just copied that little line of code into my code and it took out bad characters yes Basically, the line of code is re re removed from alphabet. It is removing non-alphabetic. Yeah, non -alphabetic. exactly. We're replacing what our current value is. It's doing a regular expression to check line, word by word, letter by letter, and it's that it's only a through z lowercase or a through z uppercase plus something else, whatever that does, and then it takes out those things and just puts an empty, empty character. So what if I do something like now temporarily you still see that in my console it does still save it like that but I don't strip those values out until I display it there it is wow so I'm gonna leave that code in there for my uh, in my version of code when I put it in the network for folder for you but if you if you want to see it there or get it from Google, I would copy it from Google because you have to type this exactly the way that it is. So uh, we're going to wrap up our main lecture now, have a little lab time. Uh, how many of you have been trying this stuff at home? If you haven't, you should. It's all free. You just need a computer, Mac or Windows. If you're doing it on Mac, again, try it because I, I'm a little rusty on the Mac aspect of things. I haven't done it on a Mac very recently. Maybe you should try it. I just borrowed the school's Mac, so I'm going to try to brush up on that again. And we're going to try to figure out both aspects of it. And uh, try this out. If you've got a laptop, bring it in. We should have some time to try to figure it out, hopefully. I've tried this on several computers. Uh, desktops, laptops, Macs, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows 8 and, nine, uh, 8 and 10, etc. And it works. Sometimes more complicated than others. Sometimes very slow, sometimes not at all, unfortunately. So hopefully you get it to work. If not, I'll help you out. You can do screenshots and send them to me via email if you can't bring your desktop, and we'll try to figure it out. That's it for the moment. Uh, make sure to sign in. You can sign out if you want, or I'll sign you out. And I'll put my code in the network folder and upload, upload everything to online. Remember how we were seeing that the error uh, on boot up? Uh, that the app was not loaded properly, or the Google app was not loaded properly? Mm -hmm. So you have to check, use GPU in the virtual device, and that fixes it. Use GPU? Yes. And the virtual device, ah, okay. Interesting. I found it online. Okay. Using the GPU. Alright, that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time. We'll do it again next time.